the aim of the present experiment is to determine the coefficient of static friction between the two surfaces in contact and these two surfaces in contact are the stainless steel and the graphite sheet and the stainless steel and the teflon sheet now what is the apparatus required for this present experiment the first is the adjustable incline this adjustable incline can be uh, inclined to any suitable posi position like this okay we can and the second one is the trolley okay uh, to which a uh, pan is is attached and we can apply certain weight to the pan the third one is the weight box and uh, after this uh, first of all what is the friction friction is the resistance offered to the motion or the tendency of the motion now the second question appears is the what causes friction now every surface has got certain asperities okay and uh, so when this is shown in this figure so every surfaces has got certain asperities and when these two surfaces come in contact with the each other these asperities got interlock with the each other and due to which the force of friction is produced the second thing is that uh, why we are performing this experiment what objective would be achieved by performing this experiment now we know that uh, friction is both the boon or bane for the various application in general the friction is often associated with losses but it has got certain positive aspect also that it help in walking uh, all the frictional drives or the or the mechanical drives uh, are possible due to friction whether it is a frictional clutch or the brakes or setup now if we determine the coefficient of static friction then it help us for the judicious selection of the frictional material okay for the various application now one question that also arises that what is the nature of this uh, force of friction whether it is a fixed force whether it is a variable force so it is a variable force okay its minimum value is zero and maximum value is mu s n and it can be beautifully shown by the graph between the uh, effort applied or the force applied and the force of friction now this is the graph that uh, beautifully sum up the force of friction that is on the y axis and the applied force on the x axis now if i see this graph the star graph starts from point o here the force applied is zero and also the force of friction is also zero now when i am increasing the applied force the force of friction is also increasing and this tend continues up to point a at this point a is known as the impending state at the impending state the force of friction has got the maximum value and that maximum value is mu s n where mu s is the coefficient of static friction between the two surfaces in contact and n is the normal reaction and once uh, i uh, you can say cross this point a then i enter the domain of the dynamic friction then the body would just about to move or body would uh, move at this time the the force of friction that would be uh, the dynamic force of friction and its value is mu d n where mu d is the coefficient of dynamic friction and n is the normal reaction and experimentally it is found out that mu d is 
0.8 times of mu s. Okay. So, now there are the two methods by which we can de determine the force of friction. The first method is called as the angle of repose method. In the angle of repose method, the first uh, I would do is that I would set this inclined to the minimum possible angle. Okay, practicable angle. I set it like this. Okay. I would place the trolley on this incline and I have to determine the coefficient of static friction between this graphite pad and this stainless steel. Okay. Now, I would place it on the incline on any suitable position then I would mark certain reference point on this incline. I am marking this, uh, this uh, reference point so that I can visualize the motion. Okay. Now, I will gently tap this incline and I would see whether this block is moving or not. Now, this block is not moving. It means the net force that is acting on this block is equal to 0. It means the force of friction does not have the maximum value. Okay. Now, I would keep it repeating this or uh, changing this angle of incline. I change it the angle of incline. So, I would change this angle of incline and then I tap it. And this process would continue until the limiting condition does not exist. Limiting condition means that the block is just about to move on the verge of the movement. Okay, impending state. Impending state, it is worth mentioning that in case of the impending state, the block would just move and then it would stop. Okay. So, I would tap it. I visualize that this block is now moving. It represents my impending state. Now, I have to determine the angle at which uh, this block is now moving. Okay. Now, the first method is that I can determine it by the, you can say the angle, uh, you can say protector mounted on this particular adjustable incline, but it has got certain limitation be because it is a mechanical, uh, you can say apparatus. So, it has got certain inherent limitations. The second one is that, is that to measure the angle, I would determine the, I would mark two points on this incline. I would determine the height of these two points with a common datum. Let this value is L1, this value is L2 and this value is L1. Okay. And the corresponding horizontal distance between the two is let A, then the 10 theta is equal to L2 minus may L1 by A. And we have also seen that since the block is just about to move, it means the net force that is acting on this particular block is 0. It means the net force that is in the y direction and in the x direction is equal to 0. So, so, here I choose the x axis is the direction which is along the plane and y direction is the direction which is normal to the plane. Okay. Now, when I put sigma f y is equal to 0, then the n 
minus may w cos theta is equal to 0, then n comes out to be w cos theta. Similarly, when I produce uh, use that sigma fx is equal to 0, then it is the mu s n that is acting upward since the block was has a tendency to move downward. So, the friction always oppose the direction of the motion. So, it would act upward mu s n is acting upward. The component of the weight this component of the weight is acting down the plane w sin theta. So, this w sin theta would try to bring the body down the plane, but it would be opposed by the this coefficient of static friction mu s n. And when the net force in x direction is equal to 0, then mu s n is equal to w sin theta. And by using these two equations, the tan theta is equal to mu s. Uh, since or uh, once I determine the value of tan theta, which I have already demonstrated how I would determine the value of tan th theta, I can find out the value of mu s coefficient of static friction. This is the first method that is the angle of repose. Now, they are the you can say the certain sources of the error. The first sources of error is that if I change this angle of incline in a abrupt manner, not in a gradual manner, then it may happen is that that the imp that impending state is just you can say is just uh, crossed ok and uh, then that is one source of the error. To eliminate this source of the error the incline should be changed in a gradual manner ok and the second is that the tap should be gentle and uniform ok. The second method to determine the coefficient of static friction is called as the coefficient uh, to determine the coefficient of static friction by loading method. Okay. In case of the loading method, what would we do is that is that we would set the first of all we would set this incline at an appropriate angle ok at any angle then we would place this trolley on the this incline ok that this trolley is such that its one end is connected to the string and a pan this is pan is attached with the with this string and this string would pass through the pulley ok would pass through the pulley and uh, on this pen I can apply certain weight ok by using the weight box and all those things. Now now I would set this inclined to a particular angle. I would place this block on the incline, then I would mark certain reference point on this incline so as to visualize the movement of the block. Then I would apply certain weight on the incline the weight should be applied gradually and this pan it should be parallel to the horizontal and this would be possible if this three strings they are equal in size. Now, I have applied certain load on the pan. Now, I would see whether I have reached the impending state or not. So, I would tap it just and see whether this block is moving or not. 
should be gradual. And I, I am tapping it. No, it is not moving. So I would change the weight. And I would tap it. This is basically a hit and tile method. So I would apply certain load on this pen. And I would keep in rep repeating this experiment till this block is on the verge of the motion, upward motion. And suppose now it is on the verge of the motion. So at this point, the T is, the tension in the string is acting upward. Okay. This block has certain weight W. So its component is acting down the plane and that component is W sin theta. Now, since the block has a tendency to move upward, the friction force would act down the plane and its value is mu s n, okay, mu s n. And uh, since at the impending state, the net force in x and y direction is equal to zero, here x direction is along the incline and y direction is normal to the incline. So I would draw this, this is the, you can say the diagram of this particular setup. Here it is the W that is acting downward. It is the W cos theta which is normal to the incline. W sin theta is along the incline in the downward direction. The T is acting upward. And similarly, the N normal reaction is perpendicular to the incline in the Y direction. So since the block does, does not have any tendency to move in Y direction as well as in X direction, so sigma Fy is equal to 0. Now from this N minus W cos theta is equal to 0 and n comes out to be w cos theta. Similarly, uh, since the block is, is not moving or on the verge of movement along the plane, so sigma fx is equal to zero. So t minus me mu s dash n minus me w sin theta is equal to zero. Here t is the tension in the string, mu s dash is a coefficient of static friction between this block and the stainless steel. And w is the weight of this block. And theta is the, is the, is the, you can say the angle of the incline. Now, Now we can determine the value of the T, the tension, by considering the equilibrium of this pan, this pan. So T is acting upward. The P, that is the effort applied or the load applied. This load include the weight of this pan also, that is acting downward. Since it is not moving in the y direction. It means the net force in the y direction is equal to zero. And T minus my P is equal to zero, or it means T is equal to P. The tension is equal to the load applied, P. So when I combine these two equations, then mu s dash is P minus my W sin theta upon my W cos theta. Now we have determined the coefficient of static friction between the two surfaces in contact. The first by the angle of repose method that is mu s and the second one is by the loading method that is mu s dash. Now the percentage 
error can be find out in the F2 terms is that mu s dash minus me mu s upon me mu s into me 100. Now, we can perform this experiment uh, either by changing the angle of incline or setting the incline at different angle. Okay, that is the first method. The second method is that we set the angle of incline at a particular angle, but we are changing the weight of this uh, block tolly by adding certain weights into this. Okay, so so this method can be performed in these two uh, different, you can say, uh, procedures. The first is that that we are changing the angle of incline and we are applying the load on the pan so that the block is just on the verge of the movement. That is the first method. The second is that we are setting the incline at a particular angle, but we are changing the weight of this block by adding or removing certain weight uh, to this block. Okay. And uh, we would find out the percentage either, okay, uh, for the different set of reading and the average value of the percentage either would be found out. Thanks.